Hello dear students, in this video we are going to discuss one of the interesting topics that is the visual cortex. So in the previous series of special senses we were tracking about the visual pathway and how they are reaching the brain. So in the brain ultimately they will go and reach the visual cortex and then they will process the visual information be it color or be it the shape it's, it will be processed in the visual cortex. So this topic will be discussed about the how the color perceptions are happening and how various different orientations are being perceived in the brain. So as such, I would suggest this is not going to be as in-depth in your examinations for the MBBS levels, so, but, but it's still good to know as a completion of the visual system. So coming to the special senses, we are discussing the special senses wherein we will be discussing the visual cortex today. In the previous thing, we saw that the visual cortex is present in the occipital lobe. But here we will be discussing about more different areas that are present in the visual cortex. So coming to the visual cortex, so the visual cortex is primarily divided into the primary visual cortex and the secondary visual cortex. Now there are so many other classifications like V3, V4, V7 and all. But right now just remember primary and secondary visual areas that is good enough and it is also located in the occipital lobe. So most of the visual information will go to the occipital lobe and that is why whenever there is a damage to the occipital lobe, the person will have some visual defects. So that is where it is located, the occipital lobe. Now coming to the primary visual cortex. This primary visual cortex is the core important area. So basic information of the vision will be, uh, will be interpreted by this primary visual cortex. That is the occipital lobe. And here we have this area called as visual area 1 or it is also simply called as V1. Sometimes it is also called as striae cortex and it is located in the fissure, the fissure that is called as calcarean fissure. This fissure is called calcarean fissure and that is its location. As you can see from this diagram, this area, the occipital area it is depicted and this is the primary visual cortex and near the calcarean fissure. In the primary visual cortex, it takes up a larger area. So the primary visual cortex is take, going to take up a larger area. And in that also, specifically, it is going to denote, denote major area for the macula. And in the previous session itself, I told you why whenever there is sometimes damage to the occipital cortex, still the macula sparing is there. Why? Because is, first of all, the area of representation for the macula and macula, all of us know it is the central vision. So the area of representation is big in comparison to the other area. One thing is that and some of the macular fibers from the right side, they go to the both the sides. And the same way, the some of the macular fibers from the left side, they also go to the macular area of the both sides. That is why sometimes we find some patients with macular sparring. So that is again, it can be asked in a explain why series also. And it has a huge area larger representation in comparison to any other field of vision. And what it is going to do, it is going to perform the orientation and the edges. Of course, some amount of color perception also will be done by the primary visual cortex, but color is majorly perceived by the secondary visual cortex. So a little bit more details about the primary visual cortex and it also got six layers. So generally any cortical layer, there are six. Like that, the visual cortex is also having six layers. Out of that, the layer four is of great significance. Why? Because this, after the lateral geniculate nuclei, wherever the optic radiations are coming, they are going to go and innervate the layer four. And in the retinal ganglion cells, there are two groups of cells. That is the M group of cells and P group of cells. The M group of cells are also called as magnocellular. And they will be carried by the magnocellular pathway. Magnocellular pathway. These cell nuclei are a little larger in size. That is why they are called as magnocellular. And P is par parvocellular pathway. So both of them, majorly they go to the primary layer. That is the layer 4. There is no difference in that. But some properties of the parvocellular pathway and the magnocellular pathway are different. So what is the difference? The P ganglion cells or the, the parvocellular pathway, they have a point to point representation. For example, if you take a particular area in the visual field, 
This will be carried in a particular pathway and in that brain also it will have a particular representation. The nearby area in the retina will be represented the nearby and the farther away areas will be represented farther away. So in this way, there are point to point representations. So it is starting from one point and the exact point can be matched in the visual context. So uh, it is very, very specific for those particular regions. And here the arrangement is by vertical neuronal columns. So what they will do is there are neuronal columns present in the layer four like this. They are vertical columns and they will analyze the information bit by bit. For example, nowadays you must have seen in the LED uh, televisions also, the information is represented bit by bit. And sometimes they are able to combine bigger, bigger LEDs also because the information is represented bit by bit and they can be arranged in continuity. And in between these bits, there will be some bigger blobs. Blobs or uh, these are bigger areas like this cylindrical structures. They are also called as color blobs. So what is the importance of color blobs? As the name indicates, it's going to perceive the color. So this vertical oriented ones are for the orientation of the structures. So how does the brain function is? Suppose if I put a picture like this, if something is popping up and if I ask you, do you spot the uh, popping up color from this? Obviously the brain will spot it immediately. And most of you by this time would have spotted this one. And how you are able to do that is because it is the color blobs are in a sequence and whenever something is out of the sequence, then it is being perceived in a better way. And if you are able to spot the abnormal oriented one here, yeah, everybody will be able to do it in a quick random. The next two, your brain would have done it by now. Why? Because this, the orientation blobs are there and some information is being represented in a different angle. So that information will be popped out whenever it is not fitting into the orientation column. So that is how the brain is going to function. And here we can spot, it looks similar, but still our brain will spot it out. And here we can spot it out. So because the representations are vertical, it will allow the vertical columns and something is popping out, it is going to put in much effort to access the information. So next coming to the secondary visual area. So very next to the primary visual cortex, we have the secondary visual areas. And as all of us know, since I have done a class on association areas, the primary areas will be smaller always and the associating areas will carry away a lot of information and integrate them. So here the primary cortex, primarily major component of vision, but the surrounding information and relating it to other things will be done by the secondary visual areas. So they are lying very next to it and there are several numbers like V2, visual area 2, visual area 3, visual area 4. And I forgot to mention one thing, the visual area 1 it is represented in the Broadman's area number 17. So Broadman area 17. And usually the secondary visual areas, secondary visual areas, they are represented by the Broadman area 80. So this is the Broadman area 80. So now how the information is being analyzed. So once the information comes to the primary visual cortex, it will come there and it will do some processing. It will analyze the orientation and other things. From here, it will send information in a bi-directional pathway. So if this question is asked, please do write this bi-directional pathway, it is important. Because as is visual cortex, it's very easy to remember. It's a primary cortex and a secondary cortex. But if you want to add on some meaning and valuable information, then these two pathways can be added. So the first pathway is fast position and motion pathway. So what is going to detect? It is going to detect the position and the forms and the, as well as the motion. Suppose there is a moving object, it is going to perceive it. The second pathway is accurate color pathway. I don't have to explain it. By this time, you would know this is for the accurate color pathway is for the color vision. And as you can see here, there are two different groups which are going in further. For example, the fast motion or fast position as well as the motion pathway. Where is it going? This black colored lines. So as you can see here, this area, the black colored lines, they have mentioned it form 3D motion and 3D position and motion. All of them are going in a unidirectional pathway. That's why they have understood that this particular information in the brain is carried towards this area. So here, where is the information going? The information is going to the posterior mid temporal area and the occipitoparietal area. 
so in the brain itself it is going to one direction that is the posterior temporal as well as the occipital parietal area and as you can see from the other pathway which we will discuss further in the color pathway it is going in a different direction towards the downward direction this is majorly done by the retinal m ganglion fibers this is majorly done by the retinal m ganglion fibers then coming to the second pathway the accurate color pathway so as the name indicates it is a color pathway so you can see this red color they have mentioned it because of the color they wanted to give more color so here it is going towards the inferior occipital as well as some of the temporal area so it is going to the inferior part of the occipital areas and what they are going to do they are going to perceive the color so we have two pathway one is for the fast and motion position and uh, the other one is for the color so it is dividing it and then uh, producing the meaning and these are the areas i will want you guys to know so the primary and secondary visual areas primary is primarily for the position sensation and orientation whereas secondary is going to in integrate further information but now the recent addition of gena has given several areas in it but i would not ask you to go into the details of all of the areas for example we have v1 v2 v3 V3A, some other subdivision is there and V7, some V5, V8, everything is there. Out of these, there are few areas I want you guys to know. For example, here the primary visual information is processed and down it is going. This is the color pathway. So whichever nucleus I am finding here, they will be mostly concerned in color pathway. And now they have found out that this VA8 region is for the color vision. So this is one important information I want you guys to know. But I will still give you a table wherein the other areas and their functions are mentioned. You can have a look at it and it's not necessary to know all the entire specific V1, V2, V3 areas. V1 is very simple because that is the primary visual cortex. So V1 it is going to cause the primary visual information including the orientation and edges. And another one important one I told you the color vision which is V8. So these are two areas we should know and V2, V3, VP. VP is ventral parietal. They are going to cause the continuous processing and larger visual fields. Whereas V3A it is for the motion. If you go back to the diagram also V3A and V3 they are located in the motion side. For example the two pathways we studied this is for the color area the other side is for the motion and position area. So V3 you can still remember it is for the motion. Then V4 is for deduction of shape and MT is medial temporal along with V5 it is for the direction. So it is going to help in the direction. And V6 they also do some deduction and LO is for recognition of shape. LO is lateral occipital. So the short forms are mentioned here. LO is lateral occipital. And V7 is for the upper and lower quadrant representation of the visual field. In this manner, now they are trying to pinpoint the areas, but still I would suggest you to remember the primary and secondary visual cortex. Out of that, most important areas are V1 and V8. V8 is for the color vision. So this primary visual cortex and secondary visual cortex might not be asked in questions, but if they ask you the pathway of the occipital region, you can mention about it once it reaches the visual cortex. It is, you can go to the primary and the secondary visual cortex. A small mention would be appreciated. That's it. So I hope it's clear. If you have any further doubts related to any of the visual system, kindly drop it in the comment section. I'll be really happy to address your doubts. Thank you so much.